So we're talking today about repairing large septal perforations. So there's a variety of septal perforation sizes that are out there, and small septal perforations that are asymptomatic usually do not need to be repaired. Medium-sized uh, septal perforation repairs can often be repaired with localized flaps and tissue changes within the nose. Perhaps the most challenging area of septal perforation repair has been large and almost near total septal perforations. Here, almost the whole lining of the nose is gone or a substantial portion of the septum is gone with the lining. In these cases, um, I've helped develop a technique which involves taking the pericranium, which is the lining of the skull, and moving this down into the nose. When I do this, I do this from an endoscopic approach, meaning there's a small incision in the hairline. From that small incision, the flap is moved from the skull, flipped down into the nose. The benefit of this technique is that this flap is vascularized. That means that there's a blood supply to the flap. The reason this is important is that lots of doctors have tried closing these large septal perforations and have had bad success. What happens is if you try to take a piece of skin and put this in the middle of a hole, the problem is that there's no blood going to the middle of the hole, and therefore this skin is going to die. With this septal perforation, with using this pericranial flap, what happens is that the blood will go to the outer edges of this flap. And perforations that lots of doctors would say were not able to be closed can now be closed with this more advanced technique. The challenge of this technique, though, is it combines the most advanced technique in facial plastic surgery, which is endoscopic release of a pericranium combined with an open rhinoplasty combined with lifting up the flap. So it's a very challenging, very technical, uh, difficult thing to do. And it's one of the more challenging things that I do. On a spectrum of revision rhinoplasty, I put this as the most challenging, and there's only a handful of surgeons in the world who are doing this technique right now.